it's time. It's that time. I gotta turn the music off so I don't get banned. Because I want this VOD to be preserved. School is in session. I think that's all I have to say. It's Thursday. It's the day for TED Talks. Usually I just watch TED Talks. But you know, I thought this week I got a lot of stuff to say. So this week I'm going to give my own. I need like some copyright free music or something. I feel like a jabron doing this silently. Let me get the classical music on. Let me get the classical royalty free shit on. You know what I'm about. You know what I'm about. All right, we'll call it. okay, all right, okay, all right, okay. Yeah! Welcome. Oh, I'm a buffoon. Okay, that's better. Welcome. To my TED Talk. Humanity and ethics on a dying planet. Dying planet is the one that we live on. The one called Earth. Why is it dying? I don't know. Hold on. We'll find out. We'll get there together. <sighs> Pre show notes. Go ahead, ask questions. If this segment does well, I'll answer future questions next Thursday. In theory. I think I'm working next Thursday, but I'll figure something out. Because I'm that kind of man. This is not a TED talk about politics, per se. It may be construed as political, but it's really bigger than politics. It's really just about ethics and morality and, you know, what we owe to each other. Adrian, why are you capping at me? Next, next item. Be cool. Uh, just don't be a dick. That's in the chat rules too, but I just figured I'd re-emphasize. Caught. Shit sucks. Uh, shit's kind of falling apart. There's a pandemic going on still that our government refused to do anything about. California's on fire again, like it always is, year after year, because it's a fire-based ecosystem. But, you know, our government refuses to do anything about it, except for send, you know, enslaved people to fight the fires for a dollar a day, or whatever. Um, there's another storm in the Gulf of Mexico. Basically, everything that the scientists were talking about, like, pre-2010, they were like, oh, climate change is going to be a big thing, it's going to, like, define the 21st century, our response to it is going to define how we continue to live and grow throughout the 21st century, and I think that if you don't see that that is happening now, you need to open your eyes a little bit, per se. Um, sea levels are going to going to continue to rise, storms are going to continue to get bigger, wildfires are going to continue to be more aggressive, unless we do something about it. Because climate change, my basically, my big realization the other day was that climate change is basically the only thing that we can really like do anything about, because if we are focusing on anything else, it's not going to fucking matter, because if we can't like grow crops in 2050 because it's too hot, then we're just gonna all die and it's not really gonna matter like how good our government is if we're all fucking dead so I feel like climate change is a priority um, and it's often something that is fucking that is not focused on in this time dude um, yeah so clearly we need to do we need to do something about climate climate change Shit, what do you mean, ain't it hot? This is my business boy outfit. Because I'm wearing a tie. I would not wear it all the way up if I... Do you guys like my tie? I got it from my MUN teacher. You can redeem points. Um, 
shit sucks, our government's not doing anything about it, and if we don't do something about it, uh, we're gonna die, and our children are gonna live in some sort of Mad Max like hellscape. Um, which is cool for me. What kind of hat do you want? Please don't make me wear the dunce hat, it's gonna ruin my credibility. I also don't have any tape on me, I don't think. Oh, nope, I got tape. I don't really want to wear the dunce hat. I'm moving a slide forward. Oh, yeah. There's like so many problems. There's slavery in Libya. That's like my favorite thing to whine about. Who would have kids? I don't know. Some goober. Are you going to pick a hat for me? A dad hat? I have dad hats. Hold. I'm always cracked. I got a lot, of, a, lot, a lot to say, not a lot of time. Um, yeah, so all those three pictures that I just showed is only shit that's happening in the US. Um, hella other countries are having their own um, coronavirus breakouts. Brazil's having like Amazon deforestation problems again. Thank you, Alyssa. India's also having a very big COVID problem. Um, fascism is rising globally because as power slips through the fingers, of the ruling class, they try to grab it real hard, and basically that manifests as fascism. And when shit, when weird shit happens, people are realizing. Like, do you know how like more politically active everyone has gotten like since the pandemic started? Like, when shit like when big shit like this happens, people start realizing that shit needs to change. Revolutions are always after like, what's the word? Come on. <laughs> Revolutions are always during times of civil unrest, and a pandemic, and climate change, and intensening natural disasters are, you know, pretty unrest, pretty unresty to me, IMO. Um, big screen? No, I'm busy. I'm giving a TED talk. If it sucks, hit the bricks. I would love to hit the bricks. But here's the thing about hitting the bricks. Problems with hitting the bricks. The Earth's escape velocity is 11.19 kilometers per second. You're cheating yourself. Why'd you redeem it during my TED talk? Um, there's also no other planets. People love to talk about how Mars could be like the next Earth, but first of all, we already have an Earth, and it's pretty sweet. And it would take so much work to col colonize Mars. Yes, I'm Ted. That's the gambit. That's what I've been saying. That's why it's Ted X Kriego W. No, I'm not watching. I'm just doing. I'm Ted. That's the gambit. That's what is special about this week. That's why I've been hyping it. Also, colonizing sucks. We're going to get to that later. Don't colonize shit. It's that simple. Conclusion. We're stuck on this planet. This sinking ship of a fucking planet. I'm so confused. Put that over there. We're stuck on the sinking Titanic ship, bro. I'm not on cocaine. This is just how I am. Aaron, I'm having a manic episode. Leave me alone. I'm not on cocaine. You do not want to see me on cocaine. It wouldn't be pretty. Um, the conclusion, we're stuck on the Titanic. And what do you do if you're on the Titanic? You can panic, you can try and swim for it, or you can just like, just vibe, just drink. Just drink the whole like alcohol supply that the ship has. You just get silly. Nothing in life matters, let's fucking party, dude. Who cares what happens after I'm gone? I'm just here for a good time, not a long time. That's one mindset that you can have. And one that I think that a lot of people do have. Or you can fix it. And here's my thing. You could ball hard if you want, but you're dying. You're going to die when it hits like 2045, when shit hit, really hits the fan. It's going to suck. You're, you, how are you going to ball hard if, you know, it's Mad Max time? 
Um, there's no point in balling hard if the, you know your world's on fire and you're gonna die in 20 years. All just very depressing. <laughs> oh fuck! How do I go back? Ah, oh, I'm going way too far. Hold. It was just the easiest transparent image I could find. Don't worry about it. Balling hard. Super fun, super dope. But everyone else has been balling hard before us, which is why everything sucks so hard. Everyone else has just been doing whatever the fuck they wanted because it was like, you know, whatever worked for them. But it's come to the point where we no longer have time to fuck around. It's like we're at the tipping point. We're gonna have to do something soon. We're gonna have to do something ASAP. Otherwise, we're all gonna die. We're not gonna be able to have kids. The Earth's gonna blow up. It's not gonna. The Earth. Here's the thing. The Earth's gonna be fine. The only thing that climate change is affecting is whether or not humans are going to continue to be a part of it. The Earth will adapt. Life will still exist on Earth. There's just no guarantee that it's a it's life that will you know accommodate humans. Which you know I would like to still live on here on Earth. I would like for the human race to not go extinct. I feel like we could do a lot of good stuff. I feel like we could have a good time. Um, I feel like it's just not it right now. We need to change some shit. So this is what I like to call the jury duty problem. Earth does rip, good call. The jury duty problem. Where you know when you get jury duty, and you get that little shitty card, and you just let it sit on your desk for a while, right? But eventually, you're gonna have to go to jury duty. You can postpone it, you might not get called. You might not get called if you do show up to jury duty. You might you know, be on vacation when jury duty happens, but eventually, someday, you're gonna get your ass to jury duty and you're gonna sit on that jury but you can't avoid it forever. Jury duty comes for you, no matter if you like it or not. And right now, jury duty is coming for our asses. You gotta go to fucking jury duty. Sometimes you gotta show up and you gotta do your part for society so, you know, shit doesn't fucking suck. So that's what brings us to fixing what we got. I don't know why I put a picture of rest here, which is also like the most HD picture of rest I've ever seen in my life. Yes. I think it was just because it's like... It just reminds me of like construction. It's not important. Okay, why does shit suck? So we've established that shit sucks. Now, how did we get here? What happened before us at this current generation that made everything so fucking terrible? Colonialism, the British, also the French, um, Germany, Belgium, basically all of Europe. China, Japan did a little bit of it. Um, you know, basically anywhere in the world there is an indigenous group of people that has been gotten that has been dicked on by a colonizing people even in like sweden even in fucking i don't know where japan even in china in korea everywhere it's white people's fault pretty much yeah but here's the thing is that non-white people still colonize like non-white people still be colonizing japan colonized korea for a while China, I think, also tried to colonize Korea. China also does some weird shit in Japan. Uh, Japan, yes, everybody do be colonizing. And it sucks. It's kind of a dick move to colonize. Yeah, fuck Spain. Fuck Spain. Spain sucks. We all hate Spain. Basically, people just not minding their own fucking business and being like, oh, you know what? You got cool land, you know? Let me get some of that. Like, let me get some of these profits. Let me get some power. Let me get some of this. Everyone just needs to chill out and mind their own fucking business. And the thing about colonialism is it started this big like snowball where now we have all these problems with like invasive species, like oppressed people, like it's just like nothing good has come from colonialism. Capitalism. Whoa, go back. Capitalism sucks. Capitalism is the worst. Um, I hate having to spend money to live. Yeah, why would you need to like go to America? How about you just do do a better job? See, that's what that's what the pilgrims did, right? We all know about the pilgrims. The pilgrims were like, man, I'm tired of getting shit on here for practicing a different religion, but I'm not going to do anything about it because I feel powerless. Instead, I'm going to go across the sea. And you know, the pilgrims probably killed a bunch of Native Americans. What about a monkey? Oh, you will get the monkey. Don't worry about it. We'll get to the, or the pilgrims got over to America because they wanted a new life because they were tired of shit in Europe. And instead of trying to fix Europe, they just, you know, were like, you know what? Let's just leave. And like... You can leave. Here's the thing. Leaving is cool. But leaving and then going to someone else's spot and blowing it up, not cool. You can't blow up someone's spot like that. If you're going to leave, if you're going to leave your like native land, you have to be respectful about the land that you come to. And in theory, in an ideal world, 
those people will welcome you and you know you can integrate into their culture but you can't bring your culture from somewhere else and try to establish it that's fucked up i think which should be common knowledge by now but you know just in case uh capitalism sucks i having to spend money to live um capitalism centralizes power at the top and it gives the illusion of progress and has created a propaganda machine especially in the united states that you know, makes people think that they're going to become the next Jeff, next Jeff Bezos, but you never are. All wealth is generational. The divine right of kings has simply shifted to the divine right of the dollar. Most wealth is generational. Anyone who actually has an American dream story is either incredibly lucky, like an athlete or a musician, or has, like, generational wealth, or got into, like, a ridiculously good school, which is basically, like, free clout. Um, and these people, these people... These cases are over-publicized to give, like, you know, to give American people the illusion that eventually that they can get it too. Then, last problem is a lack of empathy. It's hard for human beings to establish empathy with people that they don't know, that they don't interact with. Humans are made to have, like, one-on-one -on -one interactions with each other. Um, so it's kind of hard to maintain a social circle that's bigger than, like, 50 people. So it's important to maintain empathy for other people just because, like, even if you don't actually interact with them. This is a really good gif of monkey. They're called gibbons. What are we talking about? Oh, so back in the day, like back in like, you know, when agriculture was first started, people were probably beefed over territory all the time because they weren't like, they didn't just like come together. They were like, oh, this is my territory. And then the, they, they created group in groups and out groups, which we're going to get to later also. Where there's an in-group, where wherever there's an identity, there's also an exclusion to that identity. And then those two groups will butt heads because the out-group might want to be let into the in-group and the in-group might like resist that. But anywhere you create two groups, there's going to be friction between who gets to be in what group and which group gets which things, etc, etc. And you know, we're all humans, we should all be part of the same group, we should not be beefing over stupid shit. Uh, it's really just that simple. Thoughts on the dollar sucking dicko? Um. So the thing about the dollar is that it's bullshit and the economy is fake. And the stock market is basically like a chart of how comfortable rich people feel about like putting their wealth into the market as opposed to just sitting on a pile of money like a dragon. Um, so I don't really care about economics. I think economics are kind of a joke invented by capitalists to like justify shit. Cause like when the stock market goes up, I don't get paid more. But when the stock market goes down, I get laid off. It's just a big joke. It's just like a whole fucking thing. It's a whole scam. Thoughts on Nicki Minaj? Um, she has some good verses. A lot of her shit is kind of corny for me. Um, yeah, I haven't really listened to her, her any of her stuff like super deeply, but she had some bangers in the 2010s, shooting stars, starships, um, super bass. I think shooting stars and starships are the same song. Whatever. Focus. I sort of already talked about this. Israel is a colonist state. Hong Kong, colonist city state, I guess. Um. Israel sucks. Israel's the worst. Jewish people? Cool. Israel sucks. We can talk about that later if anyone has a question. Hong Kong is a tricky situation because I don't support authoritarianism or the oppressive policing practices that China's been using in Hong Kong, but I also think that the things that Hong Kong is protesting against are kind of weird champ, like the extradition bill. Um, I think that they're in mainland China, and I think that a lot of it is like astroturfing from like capitalist sources who are trying to just like destabilize communist power in China. Um, so that's a super, Hong Kong is a super nuanced situation. Um, I just wanted to show that because Hong Kong was a British colony until like the 90s. So colonism did not end with the American Revolution. Um, it's still around today. Places are still being colonized. There are still colonized countries. Puerto Rico, um, Guam. Uh, U.S. Virgin Islands, those are still, Hawaii, those are still all, like, modern colonial states. Hawaii was never properly annexed by the United States, and it's basically still a military occupation. So, you know, how to fix colonialism. 
Just listen to indigenous people. They're going to tell you what we need to do. It's literally that simple. I'm not going to tell you what to do because I'm not indigenous. I don't know their struggle. Listen to them and then, you know, spread the word. It's that fucking simple. Like, just give people the land back and then they can manage it and tell us what to do. They should be leading. It's their land. They've been living on it for however many years. They should be in charge. It's that simple. Next, capitalism. Sucks. I'm tired of buying shit. Fuck the Monopoly man. What else? How to fix. Ah, this one, kind of hard, kind of a hard fix. Um, we have to say centralize power in the working class. We have to seize the means of production, which means that instead of your boss owning the factory that you work at, all the workers who work at the factory own it. And they're all treated properly. And they're all compensated properly and equally. And wealth is redistributed equally so that everyone maintains a baseline quality of life. Equal and equitable and sufficient quality of life. I think that we all kind of get how capitalism sucks. If you have any questions, ask away. Um, I think this one's pretty self-explanatory for, you know, teens these days. I think teens hate capitalism. I don't think anyone in here is a teen, but, you know. Problems of identity. My cam is blocking it. Racism, transphobia, sexism, and homophobia are all insidious parts of society that need fixing, but any sufficient fix to the broader, problem, broader problems mentioned within should be bundled with solutions to all forms of oppression. So what this means is that the th things I was talking about before, colonialism, uh, capitalism, and lack of empathy, all need to be... Any, any fix for those three is also going to fix transphobia and racism, because all of these problems of identity are th like... What's the word? Things that I was talking about before, like the in-groups and out-groups. So capitalism created race in America um, just by virtue of the slave being a racialized social class. And so the white worker, I have actually a really good reading on this if anyone's interested, but the white worker was established as basically um, a way to pacify the white working class um, after slavery was abolished. Because once slavery was abolished, um, whites were like, wait, well, I'm being paid the same as this freed slave. Like, what makes me better than them? Like, I'm not a slave. I'm cool. Like, so then they're like, oh, no, like, you're white. Like, you're cool. You're cool. Um, that's kind of super reductive, but it's all that I have time for. If you have a question or if you'd like to read more, check out The Wages of Whiteness by, I think it's David Rodinger. I'll look it up later. Also, I really like this flag. I like that it includes trains and the black and brown stripes. And I like the little triangle. I think the triangle's fun. No questions for anyone? Am I just slamming it? Did everyone leave? No, everyone's still here. What's up? Am I going too fast? I feel like I'm going kind of fast. There's no way you're almost at 42,000 fucking bits, dude. Lack of empathy. This one's hard. Um, I don't really know how to, like, give people empathy. Just be cool. Like, use fucking... Get different perspectives. The way that I sort of opened my mind was I started going on the internet a lot and I started reading, like, stories from people who aren't necessarily from my background. I come from a background of great privilege, um, as evidenced by my... Hawaiian shirt. No, that doesn't make any sense. Don't be weird. I'm from Orange County. Um, it's a very affluent and very racist place to live in, um, which sucks. So I might have grown up like that if I hadn't gone on the internet and talked to, you know, non-racists. So good for me. Um, I don't know how I can give that experience to everyone else. Where's my mask? It's I'm. Ban that guy. Someone time that guy out. Is there any mods in here? No, don't, don't time him out. Don't time him out, he's cool. I'm inside. Yeah. This one is, this one is like, there's no really like catch all the fixing empathy. It's something that you really have to fix like for your family and friends. Like if you notice someone in your family not being empathetic, like step in and do something about it. Don't like, don't just let it slide. You know, like those times at Thanksgiving that totally blow when your uncle says some racist shit, like, call him out. Like, get his, get his goofy ass. It sucks, it's hard to do, but eventually that's, 
I think that's all we can really do. Yes. That's what I'm saying. All those like problems of identity. Yeah, use I statements. When uh when you say that all black people are lazy, it is hurtful to that their image because etc etc. Stereotypes also suck. That was just an example. I don't believe that. Yeah, if you need to beat the shit out of your uncle on the lawn, do it. He's probably bad at fighting anyway. Fuck him up. He's probably old as fuck. He's probably got a beer belly. Beat his ass. If your uncle says some stupid ass shit, ask him kindly and... What's the word? Kindly and intelligently to, you know, rethink... Rethink his, uh, his... What's the word? His stances, his convictions. Gotta stay hydrated. Shit. Gotta be cool. Nonviolent. Environmentally stable. Sustainable. Equitable. And just. Man, I would have been like a tight five if I didn't put cool there. That sucks. Okay, we're gonna get through all these. I keep. Man. Note on violence. Violence can be person to person. I, if I punch you in the face, that's violent. Violence can also be systemic. If your government refuses to give you health care, that's violent. Because you know what violence is? It's the act of reducing life expectancy. It's a, the act of, you know, making someone else's life that much shittier. Like, a poor poverty is violent because it, re it reduces life expectancy. Racism is violent. No, 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 no. That's different. You should still slide your uncle because his... His um, his shitty viewpoints are also in a way violent or come from a place of violence. So it's like, uh, it cancels out. It's like PEMDAS. That's why I have a picture of, fuck. No, go back, go back. That's why I have a picture of a guillotine. Because it's very cool to be violent against people who enact violence from the top down. Um, French Revolution, pretty violent. Um, it's pretty cool at the start. It kind of lost the track. At some point, I'm pretty sure. It's kind of hard to do a revolution. It's hard to revolutionize things. There's a lot, there's a lot that needs to change to, re to do a good revolution. It's kind of hard. I am, I am. Not that I do a lot of revolutions. Yet. Yeah, eat the rich. Fuck the rich. I don't know if I really would want to eat them. Probably don't taste that good. Sustainability. Don't use single-use products. And what this means is basically like if you have the option between putting your sandwich in like a reusable sandwich case or like a sandwich bag, a disposable sandwich bag, you should probably use a sandwich case. But I must note on this part of sustainability that this, while these are all things that you can work on as an individual, they're also things that need to happen systemically. Just because I personally want to reduce my single use pro my single use product use doesn't mean that it's actually going to do anything. It needs like it needs to businesses need to do it, governments need to do it, and people need to do it. It's not a it's not something that like, oh, you know, if we all just use less plastic, it'll go away. Like no, we need to get, you know, water bottle companies to stop making plastic water bottles. As long as they make the plastic water bottles, there's going to be waste. Like it is a corporate problem, yeah. Because people, it's cheaper to make stuff that you can just throw away. And it's basically, it's, it's cheaper for them. It passes on the expense to the, the people who have to dispose of trash. And the people who have to live next to the trash. Water is free, that's a good call. Yeah, sustainability is not very accessible at this point in time. That's a good point. It's hard to be, it's hard to live sustainably. It's hard to, you know, buy free range eggs. It's hard to... It's hard to know which companies aren't terrible and aren't using slave labor. Spoiler alert is most companies use some form of slave labor or child labor or some shit like that. Um, there's a reason that there's a phrase called there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. Somewhere along the chain of production, and this is something that my mom always fights me about. Anywhere along the chain of production in your good, there's probably some like ethical fuck up. Someone is being underpaid, someone is being exploited, the environment is being trunched. Anywhere, any production line in fucking things, there's something along the chain of production that 
someone is getting dicked over. It might be the consumer, it might be the dude who's making whatever it is in a factory. Um, that's in bad taste, Streamlabs. Recycle, that's pretty straightforward. Reuse, and these are all things, fuck. These are all things that companies need to do first. I think that most people probably, you know, make more of an effort to do these things than companies do. I hate that I'm having to move my camera around all the time. I wish it would just like move on its own. I should just put all my pictures in the same place. Ah, this is what I was talking about earlier. Respect indigenous land management practices. They know how shit works. They know what needs to happen. Protect native ecosystems. And here's here's why native ecosystems are important. Let me this is my time to shine. Native ecosystems increase biodiversity. When invasive shit comes in, if it if it does upgrade to invasive, here's the thing. There's plant there's things that are exotic, which means it grows somewhere it doesn't like live. Yes, this is my own TED Talk, Sam. <laughs> I really I really had to gather this one because this is like my shit. Um so there's exotics. Like this is just a plant that's like cool. Not no, that's about it. It might be cool, it might suck. It's exotic because it's it's growing somewhere it's not supposed to. But what makes it invasive and when it is when it takes over and when it starts excluding um, natural native species from the habitat. So something like ice plant and a lot of grasses in California are super invasive. A lot of plants from South Africa um, come South Africa and Australia come to that's a thing. Um, yeah, it's sort of like colonialism. All my homies hate ice plant. Yeah, fuck ice plant. Um, if you see any ice plant, uh, you could pee on it. You could rip it out. It's totally cool. Just pee on it. Just rip it out. Don't poop on it. That's going to make it worse. You pour alcohol on it. Burn it. Don't burn it. Don't burn it. That could go wrong. I'll show a picture of ice plant later. Nah, spiders are cool. Um, What else? Oh, so when invasives crowd out, uh, native plants they lower biodiversity and when biodiversity is lowered in an ecosystem biodiversity is like the number of different like organisms there are so if if you know let's say a forest has like 10 types of trees versus a forest that has like two types of trees the one with 10 more with 10 types of trees is more biodiverse so the higher the biodiversity is the more like resilient and um, adaptive to change that ecosystem is because Native, the way that ecosystems work is it's all like very interconnected. Everything has like its place. Everything feeds into everything else. And when you have an invasive plant come in, it totally just like, it's like a meteor. It totally just like crashes and totally like throws everything else out of whack. And then if you then get like, you know, a stochastic event or a random event that's like, you know, a wildfire or just like a, a tornado or anything, anything like anything that normally happens, the native, the native community that has an invasive is not going to, um, it's not going to bounce back as reliably as a community that has like only native plants because native plants are adapted to the conditions that of the you know of the locale that they're in I, I think that's a pretty good explanation living reasonably yes this is true succession is a little big brain I think for the un, for the non, you know, for the non-biologists in chat. So I can talk about this succession at, a, at another time, or maybe after, if I have time. Oh, actually, close to that. I think there's only like 30 slides. Living reasonably. Be realistic about your needs and your wants. This is more directed at rich people, honestly. You guys are probably all cool. Um. But like, you know, you don't need five cars. You need like one. You don't need seven houses. You don't need, you know, all this shit. You only need like, you know, a certain number of things, which I'm going to get to. Fuck. Gotta move the cam. Cam's up here now. Fuck it. Okay, so here's my take. No, you're not invited to the 100 Thieves Mansion. Just kidding. Mansions? Here's the thing about mansions. Mansions are stupid if it's just like one family living there. I think mansions could be cool as like an apartment complex kind of deal. 
um, where everyone just kind of lives in the same cool house together, I think that could be fun. I think that if your mansion has like less than 20 people in it, you're probably wasting space and you're probably a dick. If you have like seven bathrooms and only two of them are ever used, then you're just a dick. You don't need those extra five bathrooms. Like, basically don't make, don't like take up resources if you're not going to use them. You know, like, uh, what's the word? If you're at the dining hall or whatever, don't take ten chicken fingers if you're going to throw five of them away. Like, you're just wasting chicken fingers. Don't build a McMansion if you're only going to use two bedrooms. You're wasting all that land. Okay, so here's what I think the basic rights are. There's probably a little wiggle room in here, but there's a few of them that I think are non-negotiable, which I think are housing, food, and water. I think that those are non-negotiable. Internet and electricity are kind of more arguable, but I think at least in a, in a developed country like America, where those things are super essential to like working and living, I think those are basic rights. I think that everyone should have that basic right to internet and electricity, um, but it's more reasonable to ask or to expect in a country that ha already has the infrastructure to provide it. Like. For example, if I started a colony like on Mars or whatever, education, that's a good take. I agree with that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. That's a good call. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. As education shifts, or educa as education and work shifts more online, internet is increasingly important to just everyday life which is why it should be a basic right IMO yeah which is a kind of kind of productive okay here's the here's the second part there's basic rights and there's civil rights I, I fuck, honestly I fuck with education as a basic right I think it's important I think education is super important and I think that the reason that fucking America sucks is because its education system is so shitty and is so like overwhelmed with propaganda um, okay so here's the next part it's civil rights which is like what your government you know won't kill you for your government should not kill you for you know any reason but we'll get to that spark stands for it's basically your first amendment rights you have speech press assembly religion and protest criminal rights which is like oh let's go TIC registering to vote brother get that look up your propositions in your state look up your local council members if you live in California uh, you could pretty much pick whoever presidential candidate you want blue is probably gonna win because uh, the electoral college is a total fucking scam which I could talk about on another TED talk honestly I fucking hate the electoral college it's so fucking stupid uh, criminal rights. This is like your third through like sixth amendments or some shit like that. It's like no torture, no cruel, unusual punishment. Um, you have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. Uh, you're innocent until proven guilty, etc. Um, then there's restorative justice, which I'll get to in a second. There's fair treatment under the law. And there's one that I think is really important, which is a popular participation in the government. If government can't, um, if a government can't guarantee that all of its citizens or its constituents can participate, then it's a failure of a government. And that's why I think the United States government is kind of a failure. It's because so many people don't actually get to participate at any level, either because they don't know how or because they can't afford to or because their vote just doesn't matter or because the person that they voted for, you know, doesn't keep their promises. That's why I like to think of America as an oligarchy a lot of the time. Or maybe as like a corporatocracy, if you want to play that game, where it's pretty much just ran by like shit is ran as a what's it called? Oh yeah, felons can't vote. That's a good call, Sam. Yeah, if you're if you're gonna remove the right to vote, if you can remove the right to vote, then like that's super shady. That's super fucked up. Basically, America is run by like three corporations in a trench coat. Like Disney, Nestle, and like Boeing. Oh, and like Chevron or whoever. BP. Yeah, I fucking hate America. Just dog shit country. Restorative justice is better than punitive justice. 
is something that Angela Davis talks a lot about. If you want someone a little bit more educated than me to talk about this, I'm not super educated on this subject, but I, you know, I have, you know, some pipe dreams that I think would be cool. Um, so what we have now is a punitive justice system. If you do something bad, you get sent to timeout, i.e., jail. Which is fucking stupid. No one, yes, the Coke family. I like to say cock family. Um, because it kind of, uh, you know, really gets where my head's at regarding them and their efforts. Fuck Fox News. Um, so punitive justice is stupid and doesn't really work. If you get sent to prison, um, it's probably a really good chance that when you get out of prison, you're probably going to do more crimes because you've been disconnected from your society, your family and friends, your job. Um, there's no guarantee that you're going to have housing when you get out. There's no guarantee you're going to have work lined up because felons or, you know, any criminal is basically discriminated against, discriminated against in the workplace. Um, so no one actually learns anything in prison, mostly. I don't think people really learn things in prison. I think that the people who learn things in prison probably weren't guilty of anything in the first place and were probably wrongfully in prison. I think that people who... I don't really know where I'm going with this. Anyway, my point is that punitive justice is stupid and bad and doesn't work as evidence. It's just punitive justice in America basically is just a big money scam uh, to, you know, make license plates and fight fires. You know, you want to hear something fucked up about firefighters in America or in California? So there's all of these like inmate firefighters who work for like a dollar an hour or something, literally putting their lives on the line. And when they get out of jail, they can't even become firefighters, even though they have like all the experience in the world. Because they're criminals, they're excluded from joining like firefighting. So the alternative, prison sucks. Yeah, prison does suck. Maybe we could have a guest TED Talk, Adrian. I don't know who that is, but he's got a cool name, I think. So restorative justice is um, it's something basically. If someone does something bad, you look at the root cause. You look at why do they do that bad thing. No, Craig T, come on. You look at why they did something bad. Why, you know, why did Jean Valjean steal that loaf of bread? Because his family was poor. Um, if you just gave Jean Valjean some bread, he probably wouldn't do crime anymore. You know, like if someone's selling weed, it's probably because they're broke and they need money. If you don't want people to sell weed, you know, get them a good job. If you don't want people to steal, then don't make goods so hard to obtain. It's that simple. I think something that could be really useful in a restorative justice system is the use of... I don't want to say incarceration. I want the... I want like... I also don't want to use the word punishment. I want the consequence for crime to be like... Or an option for a criminal consequence to be like... Oh, the Stanford experience? Bro, or the experiment. I'd be reading about the Stanford experiment too. I hear I hear a lot of people saying that it's totally like fake because all of the like volunteers or the like the what's it called? Oh, okay, I see. That's kinda cool. Uh, a problem with the Stanford prison experiment was that if that's even what you're talking about. Was that it was basically all like white dudes and so it wasn't really um it wasn't really a commentary on human nature it was just kind of a commentary on like straight white dudes which are kind of the worst oh yeah yes sam tell him truth is this game was rigged from the start. It's kind of like the mar the marshmallow problem. Where they're like, oh, poor kids take the marshmallow. Which means that poor kids are... Poor kids are, like, inferior. It's like, no, poor kids take the marshmallow because you made it so that they don't know whether or not they're going to have food on the table. So there's no guarantee that there's going to be a second marshmallow. I hate the marshmallow experiment. It's totally fucking stupid. Okay. So citizenship and borders. If you have borders and if you have citizenship, then you're creating an in-group. 
you're saying that these are my people. These are my people who I fucks with and who my rules apply to. If you're not them, then you get a different set of rules that might not be as fun and or cool. The only reason that citizenship exists is to disadvantage people who aren't citizens in the country in question. Equi true equitability means that citizenship or states or whatever you want to call it or governments are inclusive of all people who reside in that territory or travel through that territory. You shouldn't have special privilege just because you happen to be living somewhere. This is also this is a problem of immigration pretty much. It's like the reason that you know undocumented immigrants are called that is to other them from citizens because if you can other someone if you can set up a group of people this is a problem that persists across any problem of identity if you can other someone if you can justify that they're different than you in some fundamental way then you can justify any kind of violence against them it's what the nazis do it's what racists do it's you know what all jabronis do they just establish a group as the other and then they pound that group until they don't exist anymore for, you know, for whichever reason. Sometimes it's personal gain, sometimes it's because, sometimes it's monetary gain, sometimes it's like, just for funsies. It's kind of fucked up. Oh, that's it. Here's what I want from you people. I want you to think about what I've said today. I want you to think about jury duty. I want you to think about what you can do and how you're gonna work to, you know, avoid a Mad Max type scenario. And I don't mean vote, because we've been voting. I've been voting. We've been voting since, you know, 1776 or whatever. But voting is exclusive. Gerrymandering exists. Um, felons can't vote. Um, Poor people often can't vote because voting day is not a holiday. You know, there's all kinds of voter fraud, there's all, or not voter fraud, there's all kinds of election fraud that goes on in America, and it just never gets, you know, noticed or taken care of. It gets noticed mostly all the time, but it just never gets taken care of because the people in power just don't care, or they made it like that in the first place. A lot of this shit happens in Georgia if you want to go check out election fraud in Georgia. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the only thing that works is direct action, which is like protesting, uh, showing up at your congressman's house and taking shit on his doorstep. I'm not condoning that, personally, I'm not, you know, advocating for you to commit crimes. Um, but you know, if you do happen to commit a crime, you know, be safe about it. You know, don't get caught. Don't wear any bright shirts, don't wear anything that's revealing. That would reveal your identity. Wear a mask. Wear sunglasses. This is all, you know, not that I would ever, co like, condone crime. But, like, if you're going to do crime, you know, be responsible. Don't tell anyone where you're going. You know, turn your phone off. Leave it at home. So Google can't track you. You know, not that I would condone crime. Um, but, you know. Not that I would ever condone crime. I, you know, I'm not condoning crime at all. But if you want to do crime, like... You know, don't use phone services, don't have your biometric lock on your phone, make sure your phone is encrypted, police can break facial recognition or thumbprint recognition without a warrant, but they cannot break passcodes without a warrant. So if you're, you know, if you're going to do something illegal, not that I'm saying you are or that you should, um, you should probably have your phone on a password lock that's longer than four numbers so it's harder to break. Make sure you know your rights. Anytime you think about doing something illegal, you have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. Um, you must invoke if you're ever arrested. Not that I'm saying you should ever be arrested or that you will. Make sure that you do not say anything to the police because police are legally allowed to lie and they are not legally required, required to protect you. Police exist to protect property interests and, you know, the rights of the upper class of the ruling class. Make sure you invoke your right to a lawyer. Say, I'm invoking my right to a lawyer. I will not speak without my attorney present. If you mince words, if you don't say that exact phrase, 
then the police may find a way to finagle you out of having a lawyer. There is one case of a man who said, I want a lawyer, dog, um, to police. And the, a court ruled a court ruled that this man was asking for a dog that was also a lawyer. So he wasn't invoking his rights. So you need to be real, like, nitty gritty about this. Because people will do everything that they can to try and fuck you over. So, you know, be safe. Find a local group that, you know, works to fix shit. Talk to your friends and family. Um, try and educate them. This is what this is my mission is. I'm trying to educate you so you all, you know, go out and educate people that you know. Do your own reading. Do your own research. None of this stuff was, like, handed to me. It's all stuff that I, like, realized by myself or found, like, on accident. I did take a few classes. Vote. Voting's important, yes, but voting is a tiny first step. But honestly, voting for your local your local offices is much more important. Yes, don't stop watching Brooklyn Nine Nine. Show blows. It's propaganda. They do crimes on that show all the time. Voting is important. I would love to live in a world where voting is all the political action that you have to do, but that's not the case. We need to do more than just vote. Um, we need to organize as a people, as a class of workers and students. Um, join a union if you work somewhere that's unionized try to join the union if you're not working at a place that's unionized try and start a union unions are very good unions are very cool we love unions um i don't know what else i have to say does anyone have any questions any questions at all 41 42 43 i don't get it 21, 21, 21. Well, I'm putting cool music back on. Ah! No, I'm not. I'm leaving the class on. Any questions? I'll, you know, office hours are open. Very cool. Go team. Where's my basic rights slide? I fuck with education. Thank you. Honestly, this is all a big gambit so I can record this and show it to my parents and they can't interrupt me while I make my points. Where's that? See me on that grind. I also... <laughs> I also wanted to not be political because it's bigger than that. The Democrats... Okay, I'm going to be a little bit political now. The Democratic Party is not your friend. They only exist as the party that's slightly less than the Republicans. I'm not saying that they've never been the good guys or that they've always been the bad guys. I'm saying that currently, in its current iteration, the Democratic Party does not have your best interests at heart. The Democratic Party is perfectly happy to drone strike half the world as long as half of the pilots are female. We know this. I'm gonna vote for Joe Biden. I'm not happy about it, he's a bullshit candidate. He's responsible for, you know, the tough on crime bill. And he picked the cop as his vice president. Kamala Harris is a fucking chode. Um, I'm gonna vote for him though, because it might be marginally better. The slide into, you know, complete fascism might take a, lo a little longer. Here's the thing, though. If we do get Biden elected, that doesn't mean the battle's over. Biden is in no way going to fix anything. He's just going to maintain the status quo that much longer. He's not going to change anything. He has no interest in changing anything because everything perfectly works out for him already. I think, what's it called? The only two American politicians that I really follow right now are Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ilhan Omar. Those are the only two that really stood out to me as, like, actually, like, somewhat left politicians. Um, I endorse them. I would love to see them run for higher office. I would love to have one of them as my president, hopefully. Because they sound like they know what they're talking about. As parts of, you know, like, millennial generation. Millennial slash Zoomer generations. And don't... Here's the thing. I know that you people like to talk about, you know, the generation war, like, oh, ha, ha, boomer. Okay, boomer. Hold on, I gotta close my door. My pants are home.
there will be no interruptions during TED Talk Thursday. This is my time. This is our time. What are they talking about? Boomers. Here's the thing about boomers. They say a lot of stupid shit. Um, but some boomers are cool. The thing is that marginalized people, black people, LGBT people, etc., etc., often don't live as long because the system is violent against them. Because they're excluded from healthcare, they're excluded from work, they're excluded from, you know, higher positions in our class society. So they don't live as long. But you know who does live a long time? Racist, rich, white people. So that's why old people as a whole are so fucking racist. Environmental racism also important. Stop putting trash heaps next to, you know, black places. Got political, what do you think about people who hate both candidates but probably won't vote because ethically they don't want to vote Biden seasonally marginally better? Um, honestly, I think it's a, I don't know, it's kind of a lose-lose, honestly. How many black people? Not a lot, dude, it's probably not a lot. But here's the thing, a black person in the 1% has more in common with the white people in that 1% than, um, than with a black person in, you know, the 99%. Hold on, I'll get to Oprah. Um, I think that if you live in California, it doesn't really fucking matter if you don't vote or not, because Biden's probably going to win anyway. Um, but I think if you live in a swing state, it's kind of a dick move to not vote. Um, I also think that that kind of apathetic, um, what's it called? That kind of apathetic outlook towards voting is only really justifiable if you actually do direct action. Like, if you talk shit about voting and then don't do anything, FBI, the, dude, I'm already on so many watch lists, it's ridiculous. Um. If you talk shit about voting, if you're like, oh, I'm not going to vote for Biden because he's a dick or whatever. Yes, he's a dick. I hate Biden. He's the worst. Um, I'm still going to vote for him because, like I said, it's probably going to be marginally better. And I can respect your opinion if you don't want to vote for him because he's a clown. But I think if you're in a swing state, you should probably vote for him. Or if you're not going to vote at all, you better be doing something else, you know, to improve our political climate. It's kind of, it's a, it's a really nuanced situation because I would like to not to vote for Joe Biden either. I would have liked to vote for Bernard Sanders. He wasn't, a, you know, a perfect candidate, but he's better. He would have, you know, maybe gotten us universal health care. Or he would have at least tried. Universal health care isn't even on the ballot at the, wasn't even on the ballot at the National Democratic Convention. Oh, Oprah. Um, I think Oprah probably is too rich for her own good. I don't know. Is, does Oprah do a lot of charity these days? Oh, let's talk about charity. Charity is a really nuanced situation. Charity should not exist. Our society should already provide these things for people. We shouldn't need extra governmental um, groups to do stuff that the government should already be doing. That being said, charities are cool and help most of the time. Here's a few charities that don't help. Susan G. Komen, Autism Speaks, um, PETA, don't donate to them, they don't do anything, they're the worst. Yes, that's, that's what I'm getting to, Adrian. Charities are basically a way for the rich and powerful to increase their public image, to pay lower taxes, and to exert their power over people without being political about it. Like the Bill Gates foundation or whatever does a lot of stupid shit in Africa. Let's look up the Bill, Bill and Melinda Gates foundation. I don't even know what they do. Guided by the belief that every life value, life has equal value, the Bill and Melinda Gates foundation works to help all people lead healthy, productive lives. What does that mean? What do, you, what do they actually do? Oh, yeah. A lot of charities are like the Rudyard Kipling, like, white knight kind of thing. Where it's like, oh, you guys can't, uh, you guys can't 
solve your own problems, so we'll help them for you. Fuck Warren Buffett. Agricultural research, what does that mean? Yeah, I have no idea what they do. Can you read this? Bill and Melinda Gates backed coronavirus vaccine maker soars in Wall Street debut. It, it's always about money. It's always about money for these people. It's always about something. Okay, I remember reading something shady about the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, problems. Which relies on the tax exempt fortune. Involves directing how grant money is spent on issues. Talk to me, Vox.com. Sends more on global health every year. See, this is what you have to do. If you hear something shady, you have to look it up. You have to read it yourself. Because everyone will try to lie to you. It's hard to measure the effectiveness. Question the priorities. It's too much emphasis on technology. Shady intellectual property laws. Most people are reluctant to say anything negative. See, it's hard to criticize a charity because if you do, people are like, oh, well, they, you know, give away this, this, and this to these people. Okay, Bill Gates could buy entire countries. Bill Gates could end homelessness in the United States right now. But he's not doing any of that. He's just, you know, buying some vaccines for people. It's all, P it's all a PR move. It's always about the PR for these people. If they actually wanted to make a change, they could. But they, they have, like, strategists, and they have teams of people who... Just think about how to spend the least amount of money while getting the most cloud out of it. And that's the problem with charity. What else are we talking about? Oh, I want to see how much oak was worth. 2.5 billion dollars. Twenty billion. Oprah could do Oprah could end 10% of homelessness in the United States. But has she? Exactly, Adrian. What does Oprah Winfrey do? See, she grew up poor and she had a difficult childhood. I'm sure she did. But the reason that she's so famous right now is to, you know, peddle that, that American dream propaganda. She's also donated, okay, she's a billionaire, but she's donated millions to charity. She's the only black female billionaire in the United States. I don't care, she's still a billionaire. She spent her early years on her grandmother's farm. She went to live with her mother. She was molested multiple times. That sucks, I'm sorry, Oprah. She moved in with her father, Vernon Winfrey. First media jobs at a radio station. She dropped out to work at a local TV station. Very cool. Okay, shout out to Oprah. It seems like she's kind of self-made. Um, I don't really care. But that's the thing. is Even though she's self-made, she still has all this money, and she still has not ended homelessness. So it's like, what are you doing, Oprah? What are you doing with all that cash? Jay-Z, probably one percent it. But here's the thing is, rappers don't... Rappers aren't actually worth what you think they are. He's a, he's worth one billion. He's definitely one percent it. Um, rappers don't actually make that much, because they don't really invest. The way to make money is to have money and invest it into things which will make you more money. You can't make money off of just producing goods. All the all these people who are like this rich have like, they have holdings. You know how Shaq still has so much money? Because he owns like 20 Pizza Huts. Yeah, he's not rich because he has a TNT show. He's rich because he has, you know, endorsements and, what's it called? And franchises and property holdings. That's where wealth is. Wealth isn't, yeah, brands. Wealth is in brands and in real estate. 
wealth is not in labor. Labor in capitalism is horrendously undervalued. And the only thing that is valued in capitalism is capital. How much to get Flint clean water? Federal government doesn't require states to submit lead exposure data. Very cool, very fair. Most kids in one Alabama county are lead poisoned. Sweet! There's no safe amount of lead! Very cool. Yeah, that's why Dre is rich, because he started Beats by Dre. What else do you guys want to talk about? I'm taking the tie off. That's actually facts, but they won't fix Flint because they either don't care enough or it's too much money for them. And you know what sucks is there's probably so many other towns out there like Flint that are getting dicked over just as hard, but Flint just happens to be the one with the most publicity. And you know, it's kind of my bad for not knowing about those other ones. I'm sorry. I wish I could help. I just don't have any money. I have like $100 to my name right now. Sub to me. <laughs> Just kidding. Send your money to Flint. Don't send me your money. I don't need it. I'd like it, but there's people who need it more than me. Which painting? Bold and Brash. Pretty good. And my Kramer. He's a loathsome brute, but I can't look away. Bro, what is wrong with my camera these days? I feel like I had a good aim. Um, what time is it? 4.37? Okay, I gotta go in a sec. Sorry, and do you guys have any other burning questions? It's more like belongs in the trash. Does anyone have any other questions before I end a stream? T, stop advertising. Go ahead, Adrian. Bro, I don't want to talk about it. I got a new graphics card and it's still getting 25 FPS. I might not have enough RAM, but you guys said that it was still running like dog shit on your PCs and I'm pretty sure your PCs are like nutso, so. I feel like Valorant would be dicking me over sometimes too. Like, yesterday I was trying to stream and I was like oscillating FPS from like 40 all the way up to 90. It was like ridiculous. I had end stream. Aaron was there. Alright. I think I just need more RAM for Valorant, honestly. But, I'm gonna get there. Thank you everybody for coming to the first original TED Talk Thursday. Um, I'm working next week. I don't know if I'm gonna do this again. I wanna do it again at some point. I just need to think of... You know, think of the subject matter. I leave this message to you. Do your best. Make the world a better place. Peace.